Hey folks, how's it going? Lucas from Brazilian Blades here. Um, it's been a while since I made a video for YouTube or a video in English, but this one has a very specific goal. Um, and I'm gonna talk about the project that I'm a part of, which is the Elvia Folding Knife Project. Um, and and the, the idea for making this video came from uh, some folks discussing it in the Elvia Knife Facebook group. And there were some, and, and it's weird because it feels like it happened yesterday, but it, it's actually been a while since the Elvia is around. And we just, uh, I just thought it would be good to, to give some context to people on the folds and, and also introducing the first YouTube video on the new um, Elvia Grande folder. Now, so what's the origin of the Elvia? If you come here, you probably heard a little bit about it. Um, its inspiration came from Ed Calderon and Ed's mo Ed, Cal Ed worked with Carter Narcotics in Mexico. Now he lives in the US. He's also involved with uh, Libre Knife and he's a very experienced guy with uh, EDC. And the uh, Elvia was inspired by a folder that his mom had, a slip joint, that was sort of sharpened into this shape and it was used a lot for food processing in this uh, in this way to handle. Now, it's very interesting that, and this is uh, some information that I came up, this way of handling a knife and using it for food or for uh, utility, like the reverse grip on the inside, is actually super old. Um, there are there, it, there were traditional craftsman knives used for um, wood carving in the in the US especially in the early 20th century that were used exactly in this shape except they had a much larger handle um, they were used to carve wars and and other types of um, objects and sometimes they were used by outdoorsmen so it's a pretty utilitarian shape it has become popular with the EDC and self defense community because it's very ergonomic but the for me, the real nice part about it is the utility because, as you see, the curve is very close to the curve of a finger. So it, it's sort of an, it feels neutral and natural to hold it. And once you use it for cutting fruit and opening boxes, um, it just has very nice leverage points where you open and you use stuff and it just feels good, you know. Um, so how, how the folder came out to be the first fixed blade version, which I don't have any, um, actually were made by Tracker Dan, which is a super awesome dude that you should check out if you don't know him. Um, he's, an, he's a Navy SEAL and he does fixed blades. And his um, he had a fixed blade version of it, which was honestly, first time I saw it, I was skeptic. But once I handled it in Blade Show and I got introduced to Ed by a mutual friend of ours, um, it it really grew to me. Now, after I saw it, I'm like, okay, that it was 2018. I thought, well, that would be a cool, um, or, or 2017. I, I think it was 2018. Okay. Um, I think that would be a cool folder. Nice. Well, there was no one making a folder version of that. So, um, I met that again in the, in the gathering the USN gathering, sorry, uh, the stand is wobbly at the USN gathering. And we were right next by coincidence to tracker then. And uh, I'm very close with Rick Lala. He's a maker from Brazil, one of a uh, very good friend and one of the, one of the best folding knife makers anywhere period. Um, and he saw Ed stuff and he, he saw the LV and he saw, oh, that's interesting. That's a, that's a different project. And I, I saw the light coming in a light bulb moment, right? Um, cause I knew Rick's stuff was always super good. And I sent out the DM in 2018, like, Hey, Ed, how would you feel about a Nelvia folding knife? And he, he was like, yeah, that would be amazing. And so I, we worked a little bit on the Ed sent us the base requirements. Uh, Rick made the first proto. The first proto was delivered to Ed in, uh, to actually a f one of Ed's friends in the TKI, um, the TKI 
in 2019. And that first proto had a few things to be adjusted. It was made sort of in a rush just so Ed could do the baseline check. And so there were a few adjustments that ended up mostly in what you see now. So the main features of the Elvia are all here. You have the curved recurve blade, you have the, the ergonomics, you have the edge alignment, but it also has the folder features that I enjoy and that are very cool. They come from, from Riggs. So uh, it's sort of a, you could call it a frame lock because all the structural parts are on the frame. It has the, these are Westinghouse Micarta because this is my manager special version. Um, this is a Senmai blade forged by Gustavo Villa. So it's stainless Senmai. And all the features are there. You have a very nice thumb stud. And this was the first, uh, this was debuted in the 2019 blade show. So there were, um, those were in black and were sold by Lotto. There were, I think, 10 or something close to it. I think most of them sold in Blade Show. I brought two home and we were and we sold them later um, on Instagram. And at the time, to be honest, I had no idea if there would actually be more because the like people liked it, but some it was a little bit strange. Some people were like, oh, that's a strange shape. Is this a karambit? Like why don't you have a why don't you have a ring here and all of those and and like those are fair questions since it was so new but at the same time it meant we had no idea if it would like actually evolve but um as time passed uh, people start growing into it and we were super happy and i was super happy that a f some time later and one of the issues just going back a little bit these are custom made in brazil uh, by Rick and in his shop, which is literally in his garage and his basement. And they are built by hand one at a time. They are hand ground. Um, there is some, there is no outsourcing. So raw materials come in the titanium, the micrata, the steel raw materials come in and knife comes out. Right. So that means there is a, big limit in how many can be made. Um, it would be hard making more than five a month, right? So it means it has a certain cost. It also means that if there is a lot of interest, people have to be patient. But it's also a very cool, very utilitarian design. And the public was very, uh, some, some people in the beginning were like, oh, Rick Lala, he makes like very expensive folders. So like, let's keep it as a collectible while the other half was like, I'm going to use it. And they ended up really using it. So the, but it still was sort of a very niche thing. And we were super, I was super happy because in 2020, Ed made a collaboration with Emerson on the on a production version of the Elvia. Now this is this is all the Elvia. This is like just like the the fixed blade version, but it has those Emerson touches. And if you know Emerson, you know what I what I'm saying. It has that um, washer action, the G10 scales. You know, it it feels very tactical. And it, it just feels Emerson and you either like it or not um, because Emerson's are, are their own thing. And I happen to really enjoy it and it, which is why I have one of these. And I, I thought it, it ended up super nice. Um, they sold out, they sell out pretty, pretty fast. Um, it's hard to get in the drops, but if you manage to get one, they are a more cost-effective option for experiencing the design in a folder that still has a very high quality. And it just feels like an Emerson. And it it's something that I really appreciate because they are very different, which means have both because they are both very enjoyable, right? Um, or experience both and see which one you like better. I'm. I'm on the club of like have both. And some days I, I like carrying the Emerson. Some days I like carrying this one. Um, 
they are not mutually exclusive. You can have cool stuff that comes from different places. And now what's the latest addition on this lineup of folders? Um, so we had a, we had a, a buddy, Bjorn. Uh, Bjorn is a small guy, right? He's, I think, eight foot, no, joking. But he's pretty big. And he sent a picture saying, look, it doesn't fit my hands. And like, my hands are not that big. Like my hands are like, I think the the largest amount, lar largest size possible where it's still safe. But he he would grip it like this with his thumb here. And it, so it would be pretty dangerous. He said, I would love and to have a version that fit my Shrek hands. And since I'm, I'm, I'm sure the manager, I'm the manager of the Elvia project with Rick Lala, I like, Look, Rick, this is a pretty reasonable request, right? And if we're making customs, there, there, are, there are plenty of adjustments to be made because this is not a simple model. There are lots of important internal touches that make the design work and being reliable, such as lockup. Um, it travels more than 180 degrees. It travels almost 200 degrees, which means the, the adjustments have to be very precise. It's on bearings. Um, IKBS bearings, which are very resilient and robust and allow for a very smooth action, that it's also safe. So this is not a knife that's going to open easily in your pocket. You see, it's very, it's a very snappy detent. So um, Rick was up to the challenge. He thought it was fun. It took a couple of months and now in 20, I think it was um, around December that uh, we got the idea and the first Elvia Grande, and I'm saying Grande as in Portuguese, not in Spanish, <laughs> which just means big, um, was delivered to Bjorn yesterday and he was super happy with it. This is the second proto that's going to add with Corian scales and a deep carry clip. So this clip is slightly different from the smaller version because this one is bigger, so it would sit a bit too high on the pocket, right? Um, thicker titanium, thicker steel. This one is ABL steel. Um, we use ABL steel as a default choice because it is the stainless steel with the largest uh, toughness, right? So as a stainless more acidic steel, which means it, it won't rust easily, high toughness, easy to sharpen. It still gets very good hardness and uh, a good edge retention and most importantly it won't break when you're talking of a tip this thin um this acute you really want it to not break right um that's that's number one priority and that's one of the optimizations made for the knife so this one has corian scales which are going to be a bit hard to see in this light but they have this uh those small speckles it's it's generally used in high-end countertops very nice material. This texture was done to be a little bit of a tire texture for traction. Super snappy action. Now, in the hands of a normal person, this feels a little bit large. Um, it's definitely more of a field knife than a regular EDC if you live in the city, right? But uh, it makes for a killer barbecue. Uh, <laughs> if you want to like take apart some ribs, it's great. Um, very cool model. And it, for people, again, normal sized, it doesn't get the practical points, but it does get all the coolness ones. Um, so those are the three models and of the folders that um, I'd like to present today. There are other fixed blade versions. I would encourage you to look into um, Ads Manifesto and Sneak Reaper Cartel um, and check out the, the fixed versions, check the Elvia, the, a few other uh, styles that they have that are super cool. Um, some from, one from Turner CNC is coming out. I, it just grows on you, you know, and once you have one, you realize what the hype is. So that would be all. Thank you very much, folks, and stay safe.